This week on TGC News, Savage drops some weight, Chris goes old school, and Gun Tuber of the Week is back. Siler Co. is offering the first ever suppressed muzzleloader since the inception of the NFA. The Maxim 50 is a 50 caliber muzzleloader with a permanently attached sound moderator, able to be purchased without going to a gun store and filling out a 4473. You can even get this thing shipped straight to your door in freedom-loving states. To find out more, check out the link in the video description or head over to silencerco.com. Welcome back, everyone. My name is John Patton, and you are watching TGC News. Before we get started, I want to let you guys know that I will be at MTAC, that's Muncie Threat Assessment Center in Muncie, Indiana, on March 13th, doing a meet and greet from 7 to 9 p.m. We'll be in town doing some training at their shoot house and filming, so we definitely want you guys to come hang out on the night of the 13th. There's a link to MTAC in the description. Now, this week we are kicking things off with a new rifle from Savage called the 110 Lightweight Storm. Savage has an extensive lineup of rifles in the 110 family, but I thought this one in particular was really relevant given that a couple weeks back we talked about that Franke bolt action with the spiral fluted bolt, and last week you guys asked about lightweight bolt action rifles. This rifle is a fairly simple concept. Breaking down the features, we've got an adjustable length of pull, adjustable accu trigger, the new and improved ergos of the 110 that are appearing on every variant, as well as a few things that are specific to this one. This is where things kind of get interesting. The barrel, no matter what caliber, will be a 20-inch lightweight contour made from stainless steel. That's great for getting out in nasty weather like they intend with this rifle. It also means that with the shorter and lighter barrel, that results in a gun that's easy to carry around, right? So stainless steel, lightweight, it's good for all weather, and it's easy to carry. That's a positive thing. Beyond that, they've taken material out of the receiver itself in order to keep weight down, and they've also done the same with the bolt by spiral fluting it. Suddenly, that Franke and this Savage are looking very, very similar. They both also tip the scales around six and a half pounds according to the spec sheets. Although on the Savage spec sheet, they said something about 5.6 pounds. I assume that's with the one in 223. Speaking of that, they'll be available in 223, 7 8 308, 243, 270, and of course, 65 Creedmoor. The MSRP on these, the Savage, is set at 749, which puts the Franke at about 140 bucks cheaper. And the Franke also comes with a threaded muzzle. At the same time, though, you could say they aren't really going after the same type of hunter with these rifles. What do you guys think? Would you rather have a marginally heavier rifle with a threaded muzzle, or do you want that ultimate lightweight hunting rifle for a little bit more cash? Sound off in the comments below. And in teaching a new dog old tricks news, Chris USA, makers of the coolest 45 ACP guns ever, has announced that they are expanding into new territory with old guns. They've just announced a new brand called Edelweiss Arms. What is it? Well, according to them, they specialize in offering premium quality collector pieces to the discerning collector in the United States, leveraging on strategic business relationships in Switzerland and a wide network of partners in Europe, Edelweiss Arms aimed is to import the highest grade and historically significant collectors firearms. What all that boils down to is that they have a connection in Switzerland because they import the Sphinx pistols from there, and they're using that to bring in some seriously cool Milserp rifles. From what I can tell, these are not just your same old gun store bucket finds. I'm far from a surplus expert, but I do know that you don't see a Vetterly every day or this many nice examples of the P210 or a Luger. And in case you missed it, when they said discerning collector, that means people with money to spend. <laughs> Most of these guns are not what I would call cheap by any means, but I did see some sub $500 rifles on there as well. I believe they were K31s. I also think this is a smart play to diversify the business at Chris. They're now offering everything from ultra-modern pistol caliber carbines with the Chris Vector to high-quality regular pistols with the Sphinx and also rimfire rifles. I believe that's called Defiance and now 
this stuff. Certainly not the standard path of business, but did you ever expect Chris to do that? Anyway, speaking of which, how many of you guys out there are Milserp collectors? I don't think I've ever asked that before, but I'm really curious to see how many of you are into that. Kinetic Development Group is the place to outfit your FN SCAR rifle. Bottom to top and front to back, they have everything you could need. The SAS stock set, the MREX rail, QD points everywhere, and of course, the scarging handle. Top it off with some Kinect or side lock mounts, and you've got yourself a next level setup in a hurry. And then you can pack it all into the apparition bag and be on your way. We've worked with KDG since the early days of TGC, and you guys know the drill. Go to kineticdg.com, use the code TGC10 to get 10% off your entire order. GunTuber of the Week is back. I know I said I was putting it to bed for a while, but it's back because there are a couple of channels that have come to my attention recently that I believe really deserve more eyes on their videos. The GunTuber this week hails from South Africa and has some of the best hunting videos that I've ever had the pleasure of watching. And before you say something like, Hey John, I don't really care about hunting. You need to watch this stuff. His incredible storytelling will suck you in no matter what you're into. And the cinematics and incredible scenery, that's enough to make your jaw hit your lap. Say hello to Air Arms Hunting SA. The diversity of landscapes, diversity of animals, and the friendly culture make this place a top destination for any serious hunter. With conditions as good as they were, I was comfortable taking a shot out to 600 or 700 meters. The Huben K1 Mark II is an air gun of extremes. Today we are looking at the Air Arms Galahad. The base model of this rifle is retailing for under $1,000. Now, they aren't what I would call a small or up and coming channel. They've been around a while and they've got some subscribers, but I wanted to feature them because I think the focus on air guns means that the US market may not be watching as much as they could. There is a link down in the description to go subscribe to Matt's channel. And please, when you do that, tell him TGC sent you. If you guys know of a channel that is worthy of being gun tuber of the week, tell me who they are down in the comments below. Yep. That's it, it's a short one this week. Guys, if you dislike this video, hit that button. If you liked it, hit like, get subscribed, and consider supporting us via the links in the video description below. We have a new Amazon affiliate store, as well as a link to purchase cool shirts just like this one. And of course, links to find us all over your favorite social media platforms. And as always, thank you all for watching. We'll see you soon. The shirts worn in today's video on The Gun Collective have been provided by Patriot Patch. Closed captions have also been brought to you by Patriot Patch Company. Be sure to click the link in the video description to check out all of their great products, including their cleaning mats.